Hello, this is Dr. Rosine and welcome back to our second tutorial, Settlement of Flexible uh, Circular Footing on Sand. This exercise, um, we use the same geometry as our first tutorial, uh, except that additional element uh, will be used to model the footing. So in this exercise, we are going to, uh, to apply the load rather than prescribed displacement. These are the advantages which is we are going to, um, it's going to be modified where the foot is going to be modeled. The structural force will be applied into the prescribed displacement as the first tutorial was to use to model the footing, uh, to, to model the displacement of that footing. So we did not actually model the footing. So in this exercise, we are going to model the footing by applying load. This is the material of the soil as the first tutorial. So it's the same thing. We are not changing anything on the material, it's the same sound. The only changes we are doing in this exercise, we are modeling the footing. We are modeling the footing using a plate. We did plastic to the plate. We use plate to model slender structures in the ground with a significant flexural rigidity or bending stiffness and a normal stiffness. So to model the footing, we are using a plate and the two most important parameters are these two parameters, the normal stiffness and the flexural rigidity which you can assume or uh, you can have a measure from the laboratory depending on the calculation that you've obtained from your foundation. The equivalent thickness is a thickness within plus you do not enter this thickness. Uh, this thickness is populated depending on the two values of EA and ER that you input within plus. So this value in plus you cannot change this value. This value is calculated from your value of EA and ER within plus. So you only need to add these two values within plus. And if you have the weight of your structure, then you can add the weight here, and that's the unit of how your weight is. So you need to convert that weight to that unit. So if you have the weight, that will be your weight. For your footing, if you have the Poisson's ratio of your footing, you can have it here. So this is what we are going to use to model our uh, footing. Now, if you go back and open our plexus, this is the model we did on our, on our first tutorial. We are going to use the same model. We are only going to change this prescribed displacement and apply a load there. So I'm going to delay this, please delay this point. Don't worry if you delay all the lines. Yeah, so you can just reach all the line. That's absolutely fine. Like so. I click to come off. Now you can see that I've deleted this line which went out with the standard uh, fixity which is the boundary. So I just go back to here. Standard fixity, it just applied that back again onto side. Now, if you remember, we on the first exercise, we are modeling a symmetry of this uh, model. So we are going to model that symmetry. Hence, the footing will be 2 meters, will be 1. So we go back into our plexus. So we say we are going to model our footing with plate. So we click on plate. Start at z uh, zero and draw a one meter long plus. You remember the bottom here tells you the dimension. So that is one four. That's our plate. So this plate represents our footing. So now we apply our load. It's going to be a distributed load along the footing. So you click on the load. Apply the load onto that footing. So that is our load. Now, we are going to um, now apply the material. Since we deleted the line, which means that sand has been removed, so we're going to drag back the sand back into this area and define the footing um, properties. So, going to show material. As this is for previous exercise, we need to have the sand there with the properties already given into it's all the same properties here, like we did on the previous exercise. So, I'm just going to drag this back into this area. Now, to do our footing, we go on to where it says set tie, click click on plate, since we are using a plate to define our footing, click on plate, and then click on new to create a new plate. So I'm going to, under identification, I'm going to call it footing. Leave the color as blue, but if you want to change the color, just click here and you can move around circle to change the color as you wish so I'm going to leave you on that blue now this is why I was saying that you can only enter the EA and ER your weight and the person's ratio if you are really 
of uh, beta equals to you cannot input your thickness. This thickness is calculated from your EA and EI value. So our EA value is, if we go back to the table, EA is 5 times 10 to the power 6. So that is 5e to the power 6. Our EI is 8500. So it's 8500. And you see, it's self calculated our D value. We don't have uh, our W and we don't have our person who shows it's okay. Click OK. Now, we know this is our footing here, just where the load is applied. We're going to drag this and put on the footing. See how it turned red? I went back to blue. Turn red means that the, the property is actually been applied. And then you click OK. Now we've put we have located our material, located the material for my footing. So the next bit as previous exercise, create a mesh. You won't be able to generate the mesh if you have not put the properties of the of the soil. You see loading. So this is our mesh. Now you just click on close. So this is the cross one. Now that we've done our mesh and everything, now we need to do the calculation. Now I ask us to save this project. We're going to save as because it's a different uh, project. We're going to call foundation of sand with load. Reloading to identify the difference. Now, our calculation tab comes up. Uh, proper message comes. Just click OK. It's going to be. We are going to follow exactly the same process as the first exercise. All we change is this exercise. We apply the load. Uh, if you remember on the calculation, the first exercise we went to calculation. Under the second phase, we activated the um, display, the prescribed displacement and applied a value for. A prescribed displacement. We do exactly the same in this exercise where we are going to activate the footing and apply a load. So if you, this is the same as the previous um, exercise, it just came automatically. So the initial is initial, so that's zero. The second phase is plastic under stack construction. The number of days is not inputted here. So if you have the number of days, like if I'm saying consolidation test, I'm doing up that one day, I'll put the one day there, which is my time uh, interval. But for this case, we don't have any time, we just leave it as zero. So if you look at the top here, it gives you the phase. If you want to lock information here, you don't need to add anything here. Basically, when the calculation complete, it tells you, okay, if it's completed correctly, but if the calculation did not complete for some reason, it will add the information here as to why it failed. Here it gives you the calculation type, plastic, plastic you can change depending on what you do. This is a consolidation test, you can take as consolidation. These are uh, tabs for this parameter at the top. So you want to go to parameter, advanced or command. So I can just click on the parameters on the home here. Everything here stays constant. We don't have any time interval. The additional step was 500 from the last um, exercise we did was two, the default value is 250. If you remember on the first uh, tutorial, I increased it to 500 because the, the maximum additional step were not reached, which means the calculation could not complete. So I increased it to 500 to give more steps for plastic to calculate the model. Uh, leave the reset displacement. Uh, as it is, tick to zero. The most important bit now is to start. You need to go and define what you want plus to calculate under this phase. Now, when you come here, this is your model. Now, we know that there's no water condition, so we don't need to worry about the water condition. The soil is dry, we don't need to worry about that. So, we are under the start construction. Here now, we need to activate our plate and put our loading. So, if you click on there, you want to activate the plate distributed load you see it all goes activated so now if i right click distributed load you can add a double click but just right click to select what i want to uh, work on the distributed load now on my distributed load i want to apply my load uh, if you apply a positive load it's not going to give you a load down it's going to give you a 
a load side which is the structure the negative value be applies a downward load so we are going to apply a 350 load so you put 350 on both sides this 350 uh, note that this gi this gives also a total load that is approximate equal to the footing force uh, that's obtained the first part of the lesson. So we just apply load. If you can, you can use this apply load 350 to know what your footing force is. Uh, you just need to multiply it by the area of the footing, and that's it will give you the a footing force. So that is apply load onto the footing 350. You just click OK. So now we have we have activated our footing, activated our load, and we have applied a load of 350 onto the structure. Now you can click update. Now uh, you can. Before you can do the calculation, when we click calculate, plus will ask to define, select some node points which are going to use to uh, plot your graph. So if I go on that select point curve, I will select a point, let's say, um, just be top corner of the footing. I can select another point here, another point down here, and down there. And on this point is what you're going to use to plot your graph. Um, if you do not, you can still calculate your model without it. It's just ignore the point to plot the graph if you do not want to plot the graph. So if you've done that, you not just click calculate. As calculating this table, it shows you the progress of your calculation. I believe will be the same reason as the first exercise. The low advancement position fails. So what I'm going to do is is increase this our maximum to 500 and recalculate it. Because the first exercise failed because uh, it was not reached, so just add the load. And sometimes uh, the reason it fails sometimes uh, even if you increase the maximum steps. If it still fails, it doesn't mean the model is wrong. It just means that that load and that structure just means that it will fail. It just matter that you go and view the output result and now uh, investigate the failure. Now, it still failed, so still the load advancement fails. So this could just be of number of, of reasons. That means the load try to just be high or the maximum step is high and everything so let's just view the result and see what it looks like this is our result like when we apply the load which is basically what we're looking at but uh, you can see the boundary condition is shown here the load has actually gone down the sample which is expected so now it could just be a number of, of uh, reasons. That means that load, the plant source sample could just be the footing material. Um, basically, it could not calculate everything up. It could not finish the calculation due to the load. But it doesn't mean that it's totally wrong. So that is what you get. If you want to plot the graph, you go on that curve here and uh, select new graph and plot the, with each point and see what you obtain. So this is just basically how you do your model with um the load uh in our following tutorial depending on the, uh talk about different uh, case of failure but this is uh the next model up with the load applied